Hi there, welcome back to my channel Git Crafty Tutorials and today I'm going to show you step by step how to convert your Epson EcoTank to a sublimation printer and how to sublimate. So the tools and materials we are going to use is our sublimation ink which comes in a bottle like the Epson, our printer itself and then I'm using some ASUP sublimation paper to put it to the test. So let's just go to our unboxing step. Okay, so I took my printer out of the box and this is everything that came in the box with it. So we do have our normal ink over here, but that's not the one we're going to use. We have our power cable and then we have some papers, which are the notices. And we do have a driver CD over here, but I'm not going to use it as well. 2023, let's face it, I'm going to use the link below. As you can see, the printer has all of these blue little tapes everywhere. And we do have the notice over here on the printer. Basically, it will show you where you can find all of these tapes and it will also tell you to remove all of them. So you basically, that is your first step. You have to remove everything. Once everything has been removed, you can go to the next step, which is the notice that comes with the printer or just online or watch this tutorial and it's the same. So I'm just going to do that. And then we're going to proceed with the ink. Okay, you guys, so next step, we're going to proceed with the ink. As you can see, I've removed all the blue ribbons that were on the printer, so no more inside. So basically, for the ink part, you need to be at this side of the printer. So as you can see, we have different colors, black, yellow, magenta, and cyan. And these initials can also be found on the bottoms themselves. So these are the sublimation bottles. And as I said, they are a duplicate to the ones of the Epson ones, which is so easy to use, no syringes anymore. And basically you just have to take off the lid. Now, first of all, I want to show you where we're going to put it. So as you can see, you can open it up and then you have all of these instructions as well over here, but I'm going to show you in the tutorial and you have all of these lids. So you're going to open up this part and then you'll see that the shape is actually the same shape as the bottle itself. So that is where the bottle will go. So this is the seal that I was talking about. Just make a hole in it or remove it and then put the lid back on. And then you'll want to place the bottle over here. So we're going to do that for each color and we'll start with the black one. I'll show you. So you just go ahead and you'll put the bottle on it. You give it a good press. You can hold it or you can just leave it on it, but you'll feel and you'll hear some pressure and air that goes down. And then you'll see that the ink will just drop into the cartridge itself. So basically, I'm just going to go ahead and do all of the colors and then we'll see each other for the setup of the printer. Do know that you always have leftover ink and we will be using it at the end of this tutorial again to refill our cartridge. OK, so let's go. OK, so for the next step, we'll just go ahead and turn the printer on. Now, what's it going to do? You'll see that there are several lights that will start blinking. And now that's normal because the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to refill our ink. So that's the ink process. So as you can see, there's a red light over here and it's next to the ink icon. And basically you have the button with the triangle. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to press this button during five seconds and then you'll just let go. Now, after these five seconds, what your printer is going to do is it's going to refill the ink. Now you're going to hear some crazy sounds during this process and it's going to take long, but it's definitely normal. So it needs this process. So after these 11 minutes, and I skipped the 11 minutes, you're going to turn off the printer again and you're going to refill your printer with some normal regular paper. Now what we're going to do then, and the reason why we're turning it off is because we need to click and press on the same button with the triangle and the on off button, both at the same time during five seconds. This will trigger a test page. Now we're going to print out a test page and this is the first one. And the reason we're going to print this out is because we are going to need to see if the lines are all nice and clear. This is really important, you guys, because if you do not do the step or if you notice some um, space between the lines or you and so, or so, some hiccups, you need to correct them because otherwise afterwards with your image, you're going to have some issues where lines are in it or lines are missing. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this step and then we're going to see what the test page looks like.
There you go. So that is the page that we need, you guys. And I'm already seeing a gap in the black one. So as you can see, there's a gap in the black one, but the color one is okay. So that means we need to re-clear. We have to press again for five seconds on this button. It's not going to take another 11 minutes. No, it's just going to be three minutes additional, but it will clear out again. Now, I wanted to show you that my ink has definitely dropped a bit because it was fully, and that is just during this process, you guys. So that is why you need to refill. Now, then afterwards, and you can see on the notice itself, once you do this step again, and after the three minutes, you can just go ahead and refill again, and then you can print it this page. So you basically repeat the steps from the start. Now, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to show you again and once my lines are all correct then I'm just going to go ahead to the setup on my PC. Now the PC that I'm using is a Mac so I'm going to show you how to install the driver on your Mac, how to print and also how to print with the ICC profile for sublimation. Okay you guys so for the setup you'll I'll just add the link below and you can click on it and install it directly but basically this is the operating system you can go ahead and choose the one you'll need you can choose the language as well and then you'll go to the tab downloads and then basically it will show you the product setup or the driver. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on product setup and basically it's going to add some extra applications from Epson. So I'm not going to show the entire setup, but I've already went to my Mac, to my printers, and I'm going to add this one to my printer list. Okay, so basically it's just show up, you'll click on add and then it will be all set up for use. So let's wait. Okay, there you go. So you can see there's a little green light. So that means I can use it, but we're not there yet because I have a sublimation printer. So I do need my ICC profile. But first of all, before I jump to that, I really want to show you a really important step that you'll basically do in the beginning is go to back to the Epson website and then you can click on the same tab registration and warranty options and register your product you guys because it's really important for your warranty so make sure you just fill in all of these details okay so you have all of these fields your product your serial number you can find it on the back end of your printer your email address and then basically you're setting up your printer for warranty so you click on register your product and then you'll see this page which means it's successfully registered okay so really important but now let's go to icc profile step three okay you guys the moment you've all been waiting for icc profile and i'm using the ink owl web page i'm going to link everything in bio i'm repeating it i know but it's really simple you'll just go ahead and type in the printer you are using so for me it's the et2814 you'll click on it and it's going to jump. Then you can jo just go ahead and select your operating system. So for me, it's Mac. And then you can just go ahead and choose your graphic program. So if you're using Photoshop, Illustrator, or something other, I'm going to click on other, you'll have these profiles. So basically you see two things. You have your ICC profile itself, and then you have an instruction manual that comes in a PDF format. So when you're going to open it, please go through it because the instructions are very clear. For me, it was really simple. If you do have any questions, I can go through it, but I think the video is already that long. So I'm not going to show the entire step, but you just have to copy this and do as the steps say, because you need to move your profile in this file in order to pop up in well, printing. So this is, I'm just going to show it real quick, is your color sync profile. Okay, so you're just going to save it and then do the steps. Now let's go to step four, which is our test. And I'm going to test this with the Cricut Mug Press. It does not have to be this Mug Press, you guys. You can use one that you already have laying around or your oven doesn't, it's not important. That's not the tutorial for today, but I'm just going to use some sublimation paper and a sublimation mug. So really important, it has to be a sublimation mug, you guys, not a regular mug because otherwise it won't work. So the sublimation paper, it's already all cut up. And basically we'll just go ahead and print on that side and then the back side will be the way where the writing is on it. And it's already in the size of the printing. So I've already prepared an image and I'm going to print it out for you guys. So what do we have? We have a lot of settings and we're going to take our photo quality inkjet settings. Now for the size, I'm going to put it on 100 by 240 millimeters. I'm going to put the inches in bio. Then we're going to go to layout and we're going to flip it horizontally because we need it mirrored. Basically, we're not going to do a border and then we're going to go to color matching. Very important step because we have a color sync over there and there we can find our ink L profile. Okay. 
Then we'll go to our print settings, very important as well. And we're going to check if it's on photo quality inkjet, so perfect. And we do want it to be on high quality. That way the print turns out amazing. And you can click on print and now we're going to see how this print comes out of the printer that we've just installed together. Okay, you guys, so as you can see, you can just go ahead and put the print paper with this size in your print in your printer. And we're just going to wait and see how it comes out. So do notice very important, you guys, is that the color is not really colorful when it comes out of the printer It's after sublimation. So this is a normal result for sublimation printing. So you do not have to expect that the colors will be radiant or popping out. No, that will be your end result on your sublimation plank. So I do think it's coming out really clear. We do not see any lines. The image is really cool. We do have some kind of border, but maybe it's just because the image is that smaller. So this is the result, you guys. So as you can see, it is mirrored and that is because it will go on the mug. So now we're going to do it and we'll put it to the test. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my sublimation mug and some heating tape. So I'll put this in bio as well. Really important because when you are putting it on the mug, you will need some tape to in order to, and you do not want that. Okay, so next step, I've cut out with regular paper in the same size of my mug template, some extra paper. And the reason is because I always love to put some extra layers on top of that is because when you're doing sublimation, the ink can run out and you do not want it to touch your press. Okay. So it basically protects again. So I'm just going to do that as well for people that use the Cricut design space. They already know that you have a template over there as well, but I'm just doing it like this and it basically works as well just make sure that it's really good positioned onto the image now as you can see we've done that my Cricut mic press is also all ready to go so i'm just going to go ahead and leave this inside and we're going to close this up and we're going to wait the entire process until it's due for us so once it stops blinking you guys we can go ahead leave it cool and then i'm going to show you the end result Okay, you guys, hope you're ready. I'm just going to take off the paper from my mug as it's all cooled off and we'll just go ahead and see the end result. And there you go. As you can see, the color is already popping up and okay, the sides are not that amazing for my first test, but I do love the result, you guys. It's really glossy as well and the colors are amazing. So let's just go to our final step or final results. There you go, you guys, we made this together, our final results for our converted Ipsen Ikatang printer. And I do think the colors are amazing. Can't wait to use this printer for a whole lot more projects. And I'm going to make some tutorials as well, for sure. Please comment below. What did you think of the tutorial? Is it helpful? Like our channel, subscribe. And I want to thank you very much, you guys, again, for watching my channel, Get Crafty Tutorials. See you soon.